Hi, I'm Eric Krugel, Technical Director here at Delta Millworks. Today we're going to be looking at a vertical siding assembly. This is going to be a typical assembly that we would recommend for vertical siding. Horizontal and vertical siding have to be installed differently due to their orientation. The most important thing to remember is that the structure needs to be perpendicular to the orientation of the siding. So for horizontal siding, you have vertical studs, and so there's no problems there. But for vertical siding, we have to add a horizontal member as the structure for the vertical siding. The issue with that is that you can't put the horizontal furring strip directly up against your sheathing as it will create an impeded drainage plane. What that means is that the ventilated cladding system or rain screen is not going to operate in the way that it needs to. Due to the orientation of vertical siding, we have to add an additional member, a vertical counter batten, to float the horizontal furring strip off of the sheathing and create a drainage plane through the system. Customers do need to understand that vertical siding does usually require a deeper assembly. The main issue that we hear from customers about vertical siding is that the assembly becomes too deep and then it really changes the detailing around your windows and doors. This needs to be accounted for in the architect's drawings and details in order to properly detail your building. The reason we're calling this a pretty typical assembly is for a few different reasons. First off, we're using a zip sheathing here. This is becoming pretty typical and common in today's construction industry. The nice thing about zip is that it has the weather resistant barrier baked into the sheathing product itself. So it's a two in one product basically. What that does is that it's a self healing WRB. That's gonna allow us to nail into that sheathing without poking a hole essentially into our WRB. If we were using a traditional house wrap like Tyvek or something similar, we probably wouldn't want to be using this same system. Our weather resistant barrier is really the primary defense of moisture protection in the house. And so these types of details need to be considered when you're choosing your exterior sheathing product, your siding product, and your fasteners. Next, we have our vertical counter battens. Right here, we're using a traditional half inch plywood. This is just a really typical product that you would use in the market because it's cheap readily available, easy to rip down to size. And then we're using a three quarter inch horizontal furring strip directly over that. You could actually use a lot of different materials and thickness of materials to create the same effect in the system. The only purpose that this vertical counter button is adding to this system is floating the horizontal furring strip off of the sheathing. You could use a wood shim as thin as an eighth of an inch to maintain that drainage plane and get ventilation and air throughout the system. Thickness of this vertical counter batten is not so important, but the thickness of this horizontal furring strip is very important. The reason being is that we want to achieve a minimum of inch and one quarter of penetration into solid wood. In this case, we're getting three quarters of an inch of bite from our three nominal one by furring strip, and we're getting a half inch of bite from exterior sheathing. Adding the thickness of those two materials together meets our goal. It's extremely important to achieve a minimum of an inch and a quarter of penetration into solid wood, as that's what's gonna allow the siding to be held up against the wall for a long period of time. We do see a lot of failures in siding systems when people install the siding directly up against the sheathing. There's two issues with that. First being that there's no ventilation and the opportunity for the wood to dry out after being wetted. But the next biggest issue is that a half inch of bite into exterior sheathing is not nearly enough holding power to hold the siding up against the wall for a long period of time. We would recommend pressure treated furring strips for a very extreme climate, but in most climates, you're able to get away with a traditional non-treated lumber furring strip. At one location or another, you are going to need to use a face fastener. These are just a simple trim head screw that's painted to match the color of the siding. It's a great method for getting a fastener that will blend in easily with your siding. For your bottom board or your starter board, whether it's a vertical orientation or horizontal, the bottom of that board is going to need to be held down with an exposed fastener. The rest of the siding with a traditional one by six tongue and groove can be installed with a blind fastener system. And what that means is that we're shooting our nail or our screw into the tongue the next board will completely hide that fastener. At Delta Millworks, we want to set our clients up for success. And so we're trying to promote and give you best practice recommendations that's going to make your product last over the long haul. The longevity of our product is extremely important to us. We wouldn't want you having to replace your siding 
after a few years of installation. And that's why we're providing these best practice recommendations. At Delta Motorworks, we have a lot of different options to help you accomplish your project. And we are here in our technical department to help you in any way we can to choose the best fastener system, assembly system, and siding system that will work the best for your project.